Hi, we're Ian and Julie. Follow us on our tiny homestead and our debt-free project of a lifetime, the building of our shipping container home here in the Pyrenees, and all of this alongside our full-time jobs. Here we are back again, it's the next day, and I did another trip to the local quarry. It's the same stuff today, the 020, because this is a good bed for everything to actually get pound into. So I've got Ian shoveling this morning. My turn to be on the end of the camera. Get working, righty. Shovel, shovel. Just down here, this is where all that rubble we collected from our new neighbour. Ian rolled over it with the um, whacker plate. And everywhere's looking a little tidier. We've got rid of all our old wood pile, all our blocks. Bonfire. Ooh, I hope it's car. Ooh, Floki, keep away. Now we're getting tidy. This patch is all empty now. You could perhaps see a little better today. That's what we were doing yesterday, collecting as many rocks as we could find, just to fill at the back of here where we put the waterproof membrane on the wall. There goes Ian, he's heading off right down the end field under the trees there. Because when we went down last night to have a look, we found quite a lot of big boulders down there. So that's where he's off to, under those trees there to collect boulders. And they're going where my, actually where my shadow is in this video, just there. So we could continue where we've been building up along here with the stones. Now these stones, they're purely there to stop the, all this gravel that we put in slipping down there because a metre back, you can just see that yellow stick just there? Well that's the... And uh, he's got some rocks and we just asked him and he says, yes, we can have them. Probably not that uh, massive one, but I'm going to chuck all these other ones in here. Um, and that's going to form the bottom just to keep the gravel from going out onto the grass. So I've got my trusty little mini dumper and I'm going to try and get those in. That should be good for one load. I don't want to overload this thing. Um, right, now head back up to Julie up there. Julie goes off to the quarry again. Another ton of 2040 this time. Good little stash. Right, get that lined up along here. We're back just like that and my little site inspector Floki help me <laughs> Ian's been go, busy I'll go and get another load ah! a big rock oh a yeah 
I can see that you've put more there. Yeah. How many dumps is that now? That's only three, I think that'll do for now. It's just to uh, contain this so it doesn't come onto the grass. So. so we'll just place those big rocks and then I can start emptying. This is all temporary by the way because um, we're building a parallel retaining wall down here about a meet well where the yellow stick is. So I've got plenty of room to work. And then all I do is push these rocks into the void, like I said yesterday. Whew. It's hard work getting these stones out the trailer. Oh, shade break time. We're taking it in turns. Ian's taken over now. He's having a, a turn at it. Get this one emptied. Tidy it up a bit. Round three to the quarry. The sandwich of stones continues. Be a lot easier when we can um, rent one of those tippy trucks again just to come down and offload it because doing these big rocks with a spade it's super hard work we'll do that when we do the uh, the pathway next to the garage so we're just building this up so it's actually square because at the moment it slopes one way and then slopes the other so when we're using the tractor or anything it's quite uh yeah it's, daunting uh, <laughs> so we're just trying to square it all up get an idea so I think one more load of 020 will then tamper it all down and uh, that'll be good to go for, uh, we're not going to go straight away and get the tipper truck, but um, at least we'll be nice and tidy and flat for a little while anyway. We're definitely making progress. This time I've got Ian with me. Woohoo, trip number three. It's like a day trip out at the quarry. We've even got the sausages with us. And just like that, we're back with another trailer full. Ooh, number three, one more to go. Ian's trying, ah, that was my leg. He's trying very hard to be annoying this afternoon because I've chucked him in the trailer first. He's doing the first shift in there. Now the point of this one, we've got a bit of a dip directly in front of the carport. So we're trying to fill that in, but at the same time, Ian's filling my trailers. Ow! Ooh, I'll have him back, don't worry, when I'm in there. He's emptying full trailers of gravel. This is number four. And yes, it's the last one today. I'm not going back to the quarry. This is it. Last trailer for today, empty. Ian's got the whacker plate out. So, woo, it's heavy hot work, but it's getting there. We're chipping away a little bit at a time and we can see our levels actually rising. So that can't be a bad thing. Nice way to end the week and start the weekend on a good finish crisp level. Ooh. Oh, it's so nice watching somebody else do some work. Oh, no, no, no. Just sitting here, taking it easy. Morning, we're back on the plot. Well, I went on to Facebook Marketplace and um, purchased a new solar panel. So the solar panel we've got now, uh, I bought off Marketplace as well a while back, but um, I think it's like 200 watts, but maximum we get out of that is about 180 watts. Um, and this is what we've got now. We've got about 160 watts. 
it's about midday or coming up to midday. So um, the max I've seen on there is 180. Now, check the specs of this Delta 2 and um, it's basically a maximum input of 500 watts from the solar and I think the voltage is between 11 volts and 60 volts. I'll put those specs up here now. Um, so this panel I've bought is just on the edge. It's a 550 watt panel and it's a 50 volt, normally 48 volt, aren't they? So um, this is basically just on the edge, but um, I'm assuming that because the angle I'm at um, basically stood up on the wall, um, it's not gonna reach 550 watt. So if it reaches 500 watt, that's great. So uh, I'm gonna get it out of the van and we are gonna put it in place of the old panel. I'd love to connect them up, but that would be just too much for the, uh, the EcoFlow. And that's all we have at the moment. But um, I'll keep the old one for another project and I'll put this big one up just for now. This is all preempting our solar system that we're gonna be putting on the roof of this garage. But um, you know, that's all budget dependent and uh, we have to wait a little while. Oh, he's a lot bigger. Holy moly. Let's have a bit of positive. And these are really short, but luckily I made the cable long enough. Right, okay, let's go inside and see what that's given us. And have a look. There we go for now. I've just got to secure the top there. Just got to come back with my uh, drill. We'll take these off. The guy we bought these off at Marketplace, um, we got there and he was a solar nut. Um, he had solar panels everywhere, car battery, a Twingo battery, a Twizzy battery. So he had everything. So I'm going to keep in touch with him. Um, just in case he can uh, supply us with the rest of the panels later on. But um, yeah, I've never seen a, such a big panel. I come in to test it and uh, it's already 100% so it doesn't take any input. So I'm going to swap the cables over to this one because this one is only 57%. So I should be able to see them. Ian's just on his way back around the side of the garage workshop to the solar panel he's just gonna try and fine tune the position of the panel and whilst I'm here I'm gonna video these numbers just to see what changes oh, it's around there. Ripped up to 443. Look how fast that has charged. So only 35 more minutes now and this will be fully charged. So that's another part of getting ready for winter. We've got decent power for the, uh, the garage. Right, I call that a win. I'm pretty pleased with that. It wasn't cheap. I paid 180 euros for it. Now you probably can get them brand new um, online, but when you add the like 47, 50 euros of shipping, it doesn't really, um, it's not really cost effective for just one panel. So I just traveled 40 kilometers, 25 mile down the road and picked this one up. So there is the right one here, charging the left one, but the right one's being charged by the solar. We have a quite a bad weather forecast for the next couple of days. There's a big storm hitting Europe and we're busy now. Ian's getting the digger. That's going up to the carport. I'm going to sort out the tractor around the back and hopefully we'll have got everywhere packed away and safe before this storm hits us. Quite a bit of ready mixed concrete in here 
and I don't want it all, um, it's probably all solid already, but uh, I'm just gonna make a couple of planks. Julie's gonna get rid of this water before all this huge rain comes. So uh, we should have done this before, but I'll just put some planks along here and then put the plastic back on. Heavy ones, yeah, on the top, on the top as well. At last, we're back up here. We've had a few days not being able to work outside because we've had bad weather. So today, the main priority is to get the forming boards along the top of this retaining wall that you've been watching us build ready and prepared so that we can start filling the top in with concrete. First things first, I've just got to put this membrane back up with the sun and everything else. This is basically expanded a bit. So I need to get this back up underneath. We've been lazy, but as Julie said, the weather's been awful. So we've not been able to um, backfill with soil or anything. So I'm just gonna put an extra sealant to glue this. And then we need to get that soil over. I said I didn't want to put nails in, but um, yeah, I think I need to. Yeah, it just keeps falling out because of the sun. It's actually, uh, uh, it's made it really supple. So it's not uh, a so they don't fall on us. We'll just put them over here. So we want two centimeters, just under an inch of concrete above the gabions which means this has to come up to 10 centimeters which is what four inches so um, we're going to put the forming boards allowing four inches or 10 centimeters to uh, to stick out above that's the plan put that one down there back a bit yeah. Yeah, that. Right, we'll just rest that there and then we'll get some Okay, put this in that side, and three this side. Just need from the old form. Well, actually, it's probably Lewis because he borrowed these boards from my son. Borrowed <laughs> 28, so 28, that's 20, so that's two. 
both sides. So you need to come up a bit, yeah. Which way do we want to clamp this way, I suppose, because we can fill it from that side. Am I alright? Uh, yeah. Right. You go that one. Side there, I guess. Yeah. No, that was. For the capping the concrete wall um, we may as well come in here and put in a small lot stand if you remember right back to when we built the garage we put in a hundred mil op stand all the way around where the walls were and then painted them black and that's what this shadow gap is down below underneath the osb so we're going to do the same here between this internal wall between the main garage and the tech room I'm just going to protect the, the steel from the concrete a little bit by using this uh, bitumen tape. Ugh, sticky stuff. mil spacer and then final clamp this end and just before we uh, put the concrete in I'll just wet the base Nice and solid, steel's protected, and I've just put some silicone just around the edges, just in case. Right, I want to make, because this is 100 mil, 4 inches, I want to put a bit of rebar in just to strengthen the, uh, the corners. So and I don't want to start putting lots of little pieces of rebar to tie it all in. So I'm just going to put these hangers and then once the concrete's in, I can just take these hangers off, snip the wire, take the hangers off and we should be okay. So something like that. So they're basically hung one inch from the top, one inch from the corner. And we're going to put in um, those little microfibers as well into the concrete just to make it a lot stronger. Um, and some, and some hydrofuge. Yeah, hydrofuge to uh, make it waterproof. So I'm just going to put a series of these hangers all the way along just to suspend this. We could actually push it in afterwards but then you never know how far or how deep you push the rebar so it just it's a more to prepare before you actually do the uh, the concrete you can go up yeah. it's gone super hot again oh, no. there's no in between i've just been talking to the neighbor and he's like i'm trying to do my work and i don't know that to have t-shirt jumper there's no happy medium today. I do have long trousers on now, though. Oh, I mean, I've got jeans on. I feel claustrophobic in them. Yeah, after shorts for so long. Yeah. So 
So we've worked our way all along the main length to this corner. And this is our short little section where it actually will join up to where we've been doing the gabions. Just move our spacer. Yeah, so we're only doing this section for now and then we'll carry on with the gabions later. But that will allow then Julie to get this render, this stucco on the side. And this is going to be a practice wall to I think... see whether we can do the rest of them. <sighs> And I think I might have to practice making a few cakes and uh, icing them to perfect my technique. <laughs> I'm quite worried about doing this wall. So we're not going to concrete this just yet um, because it is Saturday and the quarry's shut and we need lots of uh, sand and gravel. So we'll be there first thing Monday morning to collect that and uh, we'll carry on with that then. But um, no, I think uh, we've done quite a bit here. So. Uh, You'll see us in the next video, hopefully concreting all this in and flattening it all off. And uh, we've done the driveway. You can see over here, after we've done all of our nice driveway, uh, our son came along, he's doing a bit of renovation work too, and dumped a load of, um, yeah, hardcore. It stinks, this plaster is so old. You know, it's probably about 80, 80 nearly 100 years old. 1920 the house is built. Um, oh, it stinks when it rains, but we're just going to compact this in. We won't bore you with that in this video. We'll compact this in just to get it nice and flat. And then uh, later on, we'll bury it in more 020. So we're going to leave this video here. Again, if you like it, thumbs up, share it to all your friends and uh, hit that subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And we will see you in the next video. Bye from the Pyrenees.